are on. What's up? Welcome to the Love and Thunder, Thunder. Love and Thunder podcast. I'm Dave Lipson. I'm Kimmy Lablabesne, and I lost my voice. <laughs> she lost her voice and she lost her mind with it. Are I don't sound sexy like this all the time, so enjoy. This yeah. is podcast number one, but before we begin, I'd like to thank the sponsors of our first podcast. Companies like Born Primitive Clothing. Born Primitive, a company for dudes by babes who want to bang dudes. Yes. Who else is sponsoring this thing? Perform Asleep. Best mattress where you can perform and sleep. <laughs> wink, wink. Nutrex Research Supplements. If it's awesome, it's Nutrex. Red Bull. Yes. They have a, they have a, a subtext. Is it, isn't it Red Bull gives you wings? Yes. Yes. You could write that. Say it again. Red Bull. Yes. <laughs> gives you wings. Yes. It's terrible. Blockbuster Video. We still exist. And our movies are great. Okay, they're not as good as DVD. We will still charge you if you bring your movie late. <laughs> That's so funny, Kat. Yeah. That's so funny. I did think it was so funny. Bob's Discount Condoms and Rubber Toys. Work 60% of the time. Do you mean 60% of the time they work every time, Cammie? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> How the dirt table have. It's a terrible percentage. We got a fun uh, podcast for you guys. <laughs> podcast conversation. Hopefully this one goes well enough to actually put out there to people. Our first one bombed. We got done with it. That was too fucking boring. But this one is going to be great. So here's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to begin by telling you a little bit about our hypertrophy for functional fitness seminar traveling around the country. We got a couple coming up. And we're going to dive into a little bit about what that is, who it's for, and all the cool things we do there. Um, then we're going to get into some training, training contests, stuff. and training methods. Blood um, starvation. Blood starvation what sets. The, what does that it? mean? And uh, how do we... You're going to become a vampire, and you're going to stop drinking blood. No. And, okay, yeah. Uh, but and then you get very, like, angry. Exactly. It's basically witchcraft, oligarchy. Yeah. And lastly... Yeah, what? We're going to talk about... Uh, oh, that's right. We took a little journey into Mushroom yep, Town uh, last night. Deep into the yes, forest. That happened. And, uh, yep. Dancing full-size adult babies everywhere. It um, was something. Okay, so uh, let's first like get with these guys a little bit about um, our, our hypertrophy for yeah. functional fitness seminar. So... Um, I was running these things by myself. I would do it with some guests sometimes. So like I had uh, Stan Efferdingani would tour around with me a little bit for it. And I was going to like, you know, maybe run it solo. And then you came in and you said, hey, Dave, why don't we take it from like pretty good to amazing? Well, thank you. And you joined the squad. I joined the team. You joined the squad. I love you and I would much rather do everything with you. It's also cool to get the female perspective on, on, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, hypertrophy training or bodybuilding because... I think, you know, just as many girls are probably interested in this stuff as guys, especially when it comes to aesthetics. I think and there's, like, I, I would like to see, like, on paper exactly how many girls do fitness, but I feel like like the majority of girls overall do some fitness and physical activity. I would guess, like, like probably... Like, most of them. Well, probably 99% of people, and you're saying, like, okay, there are a tremendous amount of girls who... Are, are interested in fitness and go in the gym and mm-hmm. I think of those people that go in the gym probably like 99% of them like you're saying are in there for like some derivative of I want to look good and feel good but yes. usually look good comes first not before feel good it's like it's not like I want to perform well and look good oh, no well, it's I look think, good first yes. that's number yes. one I, do, I want to be make me look like uh, you know a hot Hollywood actress or those yes. girls on Instagram there's too many filters well but, I feel like unless you're like doing like collegiate sport you like get into fitness because you want to look a certain way and then you kind of get obsessed with health and you're like, wait a second, this stuff makes me feel better. But if you come from collegiate, you're like, you know, I want to get like scholarship and this and that. So the fitness like gets you there. Yeah, exactly. It's but, like it performance yeah. training. You're, you're, you're in the gym Agreed. training specifically to translate to your sport, whatever yes. you're doing outside the gym. But sadly, I do feel like there's uh, so little resource for women out there. Oh, uh, yeah, in terms like, of... Like, I feel like the, the whole, like, <coughs> fitness um, 
industry has been built by men and like kind of focusing on certain thing and they do feel like the whole side of like female hormones and how, how our body change like me and you if we eat the same thing like our body is going to go in like two completely different ways I agree with and you. it just it, doesn't work and I especially love in that the world aspect of, of looking at how the female body responds to like weightlifting and things. bodybuilding the information I feel like it's almost it's always kind of Push towards men, yeah. and the thing is that whether you're a bodybuilder or not, usually if you're reading fitness magazines, that's the information you're getting. Yeah, you know, you're getting body yeah. informa- bodybuilding yeah. information for dudes, but there's nothing in there specific to women about understanding hormones. Well, and how women your body is like responds. always. I feel like it's always marketed in a way that it's like like played on their emotion the new like healthy thing that is not healthy in fact like most of the time it's usually an easy pill kind of thing well right? yes instead of building like and teaching them the foundation yeah. and like metabolism and like why yeah. you would do something to get what it's always like oh everyone right now like kombucha is the new thing so like you see all those uh those beautiful women and those publicity, they're like all running and skinny and healthy, and looking healthy, it doesn't mean that they are. Um, and then they're drinking kombucha. Kenny, so I'm gonna take like, this fishing rod, I'm gonna yes. throw it out to you and I'm gonna hook you and I'm gonna reel you in yes. back to our conversation yes, about sorry. summer. So, yes. I got a big one, there's a tuna on the line. We're gonna talk about that stuff at the A lot seminar. of people might be wondering like, what is the actual seminar like? Yes, so, uh, well first, it, there's it's a combination of like classroom learning, uh, yeah. More lecture style type of stuff, yeah. whiteboard diagrams, a lot of exercise science, a lot of physiology, uh, a lot of different types of training concepts, where you're just kind of sitting down, taking notes, and asking questions. And while I get super excited about that, I know a lot of people, while they may not be like classroom geeks, a lot mm-hmm. of the information is so new and cool it's that it becomes exciting. Uh, but I, by far, the best part is getting on the floor Apply. with these guys. Yeah. And taking athletes, a lot of them who have experience in the gym, they've been going to the gym for years, maybe yeah. they're CrossFitters, they're familiar with the foundational, functional movements and intensity and that kind of stuff. And taking these people who have maybe probably trained a certain way for a certain amount of time and think they know quite a bit, and then showing them a completely yeah. different way to do it, that totally kicks their ass. Because I think what a lot of people think bodybuilding is, it, it really is is. So so much deeper than that, yeah. if you, especially if you know what you're doing and you're doing it right. It's it's insane, and um, so being able to it's kind really of hard and really fun. Pull the curtain back for these guys, yeah. like Alice, because they the looking glass and being like, "Holy shit! There's this whole other thing that I can do, not that dissimilar to the way I've been training, that can completely not only maybe heal my body, yeah, you help me come over injuries or give me more contractile potential and build up my physicality. Not to mention looking like a, a Greek god or whatever." Yes. There's this thing that I can do that I just never even thought of training yes. that way. And um, so it's that's, fresh, that's really it's cool. It's new, it's efficient, it like gives you all the tools to feel good and look good for like the, re- the your whole life, which is awesome. And you know, when we talk about it, it's never really biased towards like, oh, everybody needs to do bodybuilding exclusively. No. It's more about like how you can leverage it to help meet your needs and goals, even yes. if you do have goals that are not about aesthetics are getting on stage like this type of training has so much utility we make arguments for why it should be included in every program including the fact that Mm -hmm. it's amazing for rehabilitation you know if you've got common areas of breakdown knees hips and shoulders that you know you got an issue with doing good hypertrophy training is a way to build up and fortify those areas of of, of Mm -hmm. orthopedic or even just like mechanical weakness Um, the other thing we talk about is like you know how athletes when they're really good at their sport and they understand the neurology behind it, like how the brain should communicate with the yeah. body, and just understanding the technique Mind, and the skill. Mind, muscle, connection. Exactly. When they have that dialed in where, and they're getting the most bang for their buck and efficiency yep. out of their effort, they don't have the most room to grow now learning the technical part. Yeah, but, but if we grow the machine, that's it. then yep. you get more thing to fire with the brain muscle connection and then we keep going. And then the last big thing we mm-hmm. argue is that like, you know, whether you're doing some kind of performance training or CrossFit or in a regular gym, you know, the vast majority of all your members are there because number one, they probably want to look really good. So as a coach, you should be able to deliver that. And as an athlete, you deserve to have your efforts moving towards your goals. You should wear your work on your body. All right, so that's the seminar. Hey, we got one coming up. 
in Norwood, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, and then Milford, Connecticut, and then uh, who do we have in August, Justin? Um, we have one in Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, Illinois. Illinois. Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, Illinois we're coming in get August. Some, uh, but um, we're, popcorn. we're gonna be in Norwood, <laughs> and we got a special deal going on where it's kind of like a BOGO, like a two for one. If you sign up, um, you can uh, you get a, a free admittance to bring a buddy. So if you guys want to go halvesies, uh, you buy one at full price, you get one free. You can invite whoever you want, another friend, coach, athlete, to get your mind blown and have some awesome training. Use the code GAINS for two, capital G A I N Z F O R, the number two, all caps, all one word, and that will uh, give you the two for one deal. And you guys can come bring your buddy, drag him in there, and they'll have an awesome time. And yes, by the way, it's an it's insane so value fun. to get to spend the entire day learning yes. six EU credit hours, all that time getting personally taught and coached by us for like 150 bucks. It's pretty damn good. It's like bad. a big party for yep. your muscle and your brain. All right, next up this week, we've been um, digging a little bit more into blood starvation type of training. So yep. why don't you tell everyone, like, kind of, make, can, can you make this like a, a like, guy for idiot and like what this is? Well, first off, like always, always look in for new methods. Yes. Always looking for new interesting ways of doing things, especially in the world of hypertrophy. You can come with some really kind of cool creative stuff. So I like to pay attention to what the top coaches and the top athletes yeah. are doing, kind of see what they're doing and then kind of almost like reverse navigate, well, what's the science behind that? Why mm -hmm. is that working for them? Because it's enough to say like, oh, do this, you know, it's really gonna work and you'll get big muscles, but it's another thing mm -hmm. to actually understand why it's working yeah. um, when you can kind of contrast it and compare it to maybe other principles you use in your training. So blood starvation sets are really kind of like a form of blood flow restriction without having to use cuffs because yep. what you do is whatever extremity you're, you're lifting, if you're lifting your lower body, you might keep your legs up and elevated so that the, bl the blood is not able to actually get back into the legs. So you're... You so know. it would be like, for example, if, I, if I'm doing a leg press, it would be like doing a leg press and then keeping my legs up. Yep. And then doing like, like a seven sets of 10 and like holding at the top for X amount of time. And then I should start feeling like you got the it. You blood perform, is leaving. You right? perform a, a higher number of contractions. Usually you're going to probably be in the uh, 8, 12, maybe 15 rep range. And, um, and what you'll do is you'll do a, a decent kind of load at that weight where it's maybe medium or manageable. But when you rest, you'll do a truncated rest period. So you'll only rest for a short period of time, maybe 10 or 15 seconds. And then you get back on it again in a cluster set where you're basically going to do like seven sets in one set. With the um, body part that you're working on elevated yep. so the blood goes down so and can It's, it's back really, really away. surprisingly hard, especially when it comes yeah. to like the neurological mm -hmm. fatigue. You start to feel much, much quicker. Uh, the, the, a lot of discomfort mm -hmm. <laughs> happening. It's weird because it's like that, like, you know, we were just talking just a second ago about that mind-muscle connection. It does feel like when you do it, you lose more and more of that and it's like in your brain you just like really have to trust that you're strong enough to do it yeah and you just have to do it but so, it like feels like like you're like i don't know yeah there's and a couple, it's, it's like there's a couple moving different ways. without feelings. i mean you can do it with really any body part or any function you just got to find mm -hmm. the right way to position it but we've done yeah. it with things like incline chest press so yeah. our athletes will do uh, 10 reps of an incline chest press at only like 30, maybe 40% of their one rep max. So pretty light in that range. And those first 10 reps are probably relatively easy. And then they'll just rack the bar in the, in the rack. Yeah. They're resting their arms, but they're keeping them up. So the blood is not able, you know, it's draining, mm -hmm. draining out of their arms. And, uh, and then they'll go back 10, uh, 15 seconds later, perform another 10 reps seven times through. We've done stuff uh, with you on the lap pull down yeah. where we had you do a couple lap pull downs. It was like, what, 10 lap pull downs. And then you just 15 keep, second at the top. Yeah, 15 seconds just holding it, holding at the top or just, you know, with your arms still mm -hmm. on the bar in that short kind of cluster and set. I thought, that, um, I thought the most surprising thing about it was like, I'm okay with like, like, Trusting my muscle, if I don't feel, just keep going. It, it was really fun to do. But I was surprised, like, once the set is over and you bring your arm back down, like, when the blood came back, all my muscle got so, like, pumped and filled. Yeah. Like, I was just surprised. I almost felt like, 
all that um is it lactic acid or acid lactic i never know which way lactic to say acid. Yep. it, it kind of felt like all that lactic acid stay up and once my arm came down it like just yeah just well up. you know like the the blood pumping in and out of your arm is going to help clear the lactate but mm -hmm. if the blood is not getting in is easy it's you yeah. know so it is pretty you know i'd really like to understand the science of it more but i can tell you it's pretty awful it hurts a lot and what i noticed like the neural fatigue and which is why I think it's an effective training tool is as motor units start to fatigue, mm -hmm. they try to pull in additional motor units. So yes. basically you're recruiting more and more muscle and really training those fibers to work synchronously a little bit better mm -hmm. too. Um, and, and the fact that it is that. It's like the body is desperate to yep. like get more things involved to make it happen. So it, you get way more benefit out of the training. Exactly. Like and, and that kind of like high rep, short rest, you know, voluminous light training is going to create the metabolic stress where you get the protein enzymatic responses in muscle. It's really going to help them grow. Mm. So I think it's cool because I'm always looking for ways not to like make a heavier weight feel easier necessarily, yes. but looking for ways to, to find and take a lightweight yeah. and make it really hard. I think that's a big thing about what like we both do. I feel like we're kind of obsessed in how to get um, the adaptation we're looking for in like the safest, most efficient way possible. Yeah. Because the you have one life and you have to weigh the risk reward, reward very carefully. Yeah. Like, you gotta spread no out. no point in, tra in just training heavy and ugly for no reason. I like, feel like it's like redefining intensity and taking it mm -hmm. from like, oh, you're only as intense if you know, it's as heavy as possible or as fast as possible and finding new ways of, mm -hmm. of creating intensity, especially if you are maybe a little bit discouraged, like, you know, maybe you're not really the type of person wanting to do like a one rep max or three rep max yeah. or five rep max lift anymore. It doesn't mean that you can't train and get stronger and get way bigger. Yeah. You just need to know how to do it. Um, and, and doing things where like we're taking lightweights and making them really hard. I love that for athletes who have had injuries because yeah, it, it allows them to get the intensity and adapt, but from a personal standpoint, it makes them feel like they can actually train again. Yes, and you still like feel like it's really hard. You get the results. And if I look at myself, like coming from like such a competitive background, it's just nice to remove the pressure of like, I used the to- score on the whiteboard. Yeah, I used to squat X amount, and now I go in and what I'm chasing is a feeling. I'm chasing like that, that leg like shaking, even though I'm doing like a body weight, uh, heels elevated squat with tempo. Like it's like so exciting to be able to mentally challenge myself in a way that has like such a low barrier of entrance because doing like lightweight something, it's not scary. It's like, I can't do it. Then if I'm super tired that day, I just go lighter, not as hard, but I get the effect. Yeah, and I love the opposite of like, you know, taking like a really big and strong guy or girl who thinks they are the shit. Like, I can do this, I can do that. And then making them feel totally weak under relatively, you know, lightweight. Yeah. Uh, that's just cool to me. And, and I think it's a way to, Maybe for them, think about diversifying their training yeah. it, with the application of like, hey, you can build more muscle this way. You don't have to get as beat up as much. It's going to help you a little bit more in the long term, maybe. Um, but that's all cool stuff. You know, when we come up with these complexes and these principles and stuff, like, you know, sometimes we have a handful of them that we know are like, these are our all stars. <laughs> you know, yeah, like we these do are, have our favorite these ones, ones that are so like, Oh, effective. I remember doing yeah. this and seeing a bunch of people do it, and this is real, real bad. But you got to constantly keep trying new things too, because yep. I feel like we're always learning and finding new favorites. Exactly. And, but and we kind of have always our all star team, it just grows. It's great to cool. have an inventory of that stuff as a coach, like, you know, to have it available, because that's the hardest thing is like trying to come up with new ways of mm -hmm. thinking and different ways of looking at it, you know, outside the box. And, you know, so what I did over time is whenever I would encounter something really awesome, I'd write it down, I'd put it in the program, but then mm -hmm. I would index it. And I have a book called the Hypertrophy Finisher's Bible, which is a, like a yeah, categorized amazing. catalog of all of our top hypertrophy <laughs> finishers. And this is stuff that uses like really cool methods like we're talking about with blood starvation sets and things like that. But it's categorized by body part. It's got like 125 different unique mm -hmm. workouts. They all take about 10 minutes that you can put them like at the end of your training program or you can stack a couple together mm -hmm. and make it a full training session. 
And um, I just, I think it's like, as a coach, yeah, check that it book out. Is amazing. It just came out in ebook, and so it's like twenty nine bucks is an ebook to have access to a, a lot of those. It's pretty cool. Just a little plug there, but you know, it, it's it's cool stuff. And uh, you know, as a coach, just don't don't you don't need to give me credit. You can right. steal it. Just buy the book. We're gonna move. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna move to our last subject, but right before that we... is last subject. That's subject number three, right? Oh wait, no, this is yeah. the oh shit. Damn but before it. we do that. Um, yeah, nothing. Let's just move on. Okay, so it was my 40th birthday this past week. Yay, rah, rah, hoot, hoot. Yeah, happy and sad, we were saying, because, like, you know, uh, a little sad turn of 40. For you, I'm just happy you're here. I just realized how far I am away from college and high school, and, you know, mentally and I'm babes. still that person. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right next to a babe, actually. Uh, but happy with where I am in my life and where I'm at physically and with my family and career. So, you know, happy and sad. But it, we want to do something special for my 40th birthday. Well, so you wanted and you dragged me in. Yeah, and Cammie, you took the helm plan an amazing, awesome surprise party with people like surprising me from out of town and just a bunch of really cool stuff. We went to Disney World and... We had this surprise party. One of my best friends in the world gifted me. He brings a little bag out and he's like, I got a gift. Don't open it up in front of the kids and, you know, make sure they can't get to it. And so I'm thinking, is it sex stuff or drug stuff? And it was drug stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, for those of you guys out there, like Camille and I, we uh, consider ourselves... Um, very open-minded people when it comes to drugs, but we are both on the same page where we like to maybe dabble with things that can have good, healthy, regenerative benefits. So as an example, like we regularly, you know, use marijuana to be able to get good, deep, restful sleep and to well, help you decompress. Well, you do way more than me. You do, I, I do a lot more than you. I really don't do much because I always, well, especially since the way I don't, I pretty much don't do anything. Not when you're either. breastfeeding, not when you're pregnant, but... Even now, because I don't want to... You know, at night, like I want to make sure I'm there. You want to? It's got to be the right but, time, right place. You got to do it responsibly, but right? We had babysitting, so we had babysitting. So kids, kids were covered, and, and like, yeah, it's the thing. Is like you got to have like a designated driver when it comes to the stuff. Yes. And normally and, it's me. And normally it's Cammy. And but like you know, we we the backstory with the mushrooms is, um, you know, years ago, like before COVID, we Cammy and I were trying to get pregnant. And um, it, things were just, you know, pretty stressful at that time. Mm -hmm. Like, we just got done with a bodybuilding show season and a bunch of things were happening. And um, we go to Disney and we decided, like, hey, let's take some mushrooms at Disney. So we did. It was little capsules of uh, psilocybin or psychedelic mushrooms. It wasn't enough to actually, um, you know, make it mind-bending. It kind of felt like just, like, doing a regular kind of, like, THC edible um, but just a little more. The great so part about it was we got pregnant. We got pregnant that night. Yeah, yeah. we think after. So now we're both convinced that this. Is yeah, the it might be the mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it was the mushrooms because we, we tried. Convinced. We tried for a while. We we're trying for six months, and it didn't you know, we, could, we yeah. didn't know if it was going to be able to happen. And then we just we actually were talking like let's just relax and stop worrying about trying to have a baby and just have fun. And you know, if, if it happens, it happens. And so, you know, we had a, a good time, though, really, that night. You were All right, go, were chilling. go to this so, yesterday. So, turning 40, we want to maybe take it to the next level, right? Because the first one was very conservative. Like I said, it was slightly You altered. wanted to take it to the next level. Dave is, like, tend to be excessive. I, okay, well... You think that prescription is, like, a, a, like a guideline? But yes, it's, like it's a, exactly what it is. A prescription a, is a guideline. But is it... That's not what I mean. I'm not finding the right word. Okay. Well, when you get In your that head word, is like a, a, a general like. I there's don't wiggle room. There's like, a little wiggle room. You like make up your own description. Well, the, thing, the reason why sometimes I, I do that is because like mm -hmm. I'm not the typical person, right? Like so I have a lot of a lot of body mass, a lot of muscle mass. It's like when they're drawing these norms, they're taking everyone from a 13 year old, 105 pound girl to a you know a 300 pound obese guy. So, like, I think that I'm probably slightly outside the spectrum on a lot of things. All right, so going back to the mushroom. No, this is good because it has to do with dosage. So we were going to step it up okay. by upping the, the, the dosage of the mushroom. The first time we did it in a capsule.
castle. It was all ground up. And this time we took mushrooms that went to 3.9 grams. And that was the recommended. Milligram. Mill- no, no it, was a gram. Yeah, it, was it was a gram. It was a gram. And it went, um, okay, so we put it in coffee and there was like a frappuccino, a little nut butter, ice, yeah, and almond with milk. With the protein because we got to keep it healthy. Didn't taste bad at all. They were warning me it was going to taste so bad. It didn't, it didn't really taste bad at all. Uh, but like the first time we we took them, it took like quite a while to kick okay, in. What you took it, it took away from the mushroom, like what you took away from yesterday's experience. What did I take away? Yeah. Oh man, I don't even I don't even know. It was, let's I'd rather just like re, maybe revisit it to understand what I took away from it. We only have four minutes left, so yeah, we gotta keep it. Telling you that. Though. All right, so okay, we take. The, All I know is that at a point I. I, we lost Justin. We lost a lot of people. There's a lot of good men back. out there. Um, so very, very quickly it kicked in. I'd say like within like 15 minutes, and then the lights started getting weird. I started to spin my head around like a top, and it was just, everything was kind of blurring together. And then Cammy's head, like just the perimeter of her head, kind of was like like glowing or fluttering. It was kind of like uh, you ever seen you ever seen like uh, propane gas shooting up into the air. It was kind of like that, like wavy, like that. Um, and at one point I stood up and I told you I feel like I'm in the cinematic mode of your iPhone because it was <laughs> focused in the front and blurry in the back. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but, you know, we, uh, we, a lot of people started disappearing. It got dark and people started disappearing and weird noises are happening. And, and I was wor- genuinely worried for you, Cam, because... Like, I don't know why you were worried for me. I couldn't I tell so if good. you were laughing at me. If you were just thinking like I'm so funny, or if you yourself were like out of your mind a little bit. Well, I get so my, I get the giggles all the time. That's my thing. And you, you were had a giggle attack. And you were my like my giggle it, trigger. I so anything even, you did, I thought actually I even if I did nothing, even yes, if I just did yes, nothing, you, you would lose me. it, and yes. I would think like, is there what is going on? But I wasn't on? laughing at you. It was like you. I just love you, so I don't know. Okay, so yeah, what have you? Uh, we come back inside. That we oh, it was so hot outside, and, and I have sinus infection. And then I was sprayed off, you know, the bug spray, and I yeah, feel like I had like an allergic, allergic reaction to it. I felt like it was like in my eye, in my mouth. <laughs> so I came inside, and I was like, you know, we all got, we sat down on the floor, and it was really nice. Like I was like, I just want to be with my close friends, the people yeah, it was I love. Really nice with and your friends, and so. we sat and we gifted each other. So I said, you know, you guys gave me all these gifts, including one of our staff members and friends, Justin and Hannah, gave me like the sweetest gift with like Nike shoes with Thunder Thunder Road embroidered on them and I can't receive a gift well and it was just, I just couldn't handle it. You tried. Um, (laughs) But so we get in the circle and we're like, I'd like to give you guys gifts. So we just like looked in each one of you guys individually and told you what I just love about you, what I see, the way I see you through me. It was like, um, it was just like gift of truth, like, like like how like we see each other like almost a, I wish you could see yourself through this lens like it was cool yeah we went around so I I went around to the, the group really I tried nice. to do everyone and then you went and did one person and just kind of we threw it around back no, and I forth. did everyone too okay yeah we, we threw it around a lot and it was funny how similar some of the mm-hmm. things other people were saying to maybe your own comments and the way that they see you that the person they're talking to does not think they're like that. I know, know, it's so funny. Um, With that being said, that was our first podcast. Number one, a little bit of shroom talk. Don't do drugs. (laughs) Do do them responsibly. Just don't listen to us. Like, do what you want, but... I can tell Cammy is very uncomfortable in the whole drug subject, subject now. She just realized that the world is going to know she doesn't. I know. She's, she's trying to. She's trying to like moonwalk out of the room. <laughs> but guess what? She can't go anywhere. Yeah. Everyone knows. We Cammie. talked about being vulnerable yesterday, That's so it. time to show the real. Vulnerable point number real one. Man. She does mushrooms. I do mushrooms. Thanks yeah. for coming by, Thanks. guys. Bye. We'll see you next week and dig ourselves a bigger grave. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. That was good. I think we could do a whole episode on just the mushroom experience. Yeah, mushroom yes. experience. Yeah, we would need more time because there was so much stuff in there. Yeah, we, we like should. Justin and walk. Want to go for a walk? Want to go for a walk? <laughs> we should do. Uh, so Aaron is coming to say bubble. Why don't we do the, how we got pregnant with him? Yeah. Yep. So Aaron is the one that was there uh, when we got pregnant. So we should do a podcast what? with him. Aaron for oh at Disney. Yeah. Aaron, from where did it go?